Hi, welcome to the Games Planner. I'm Jeff the Games Planner, and today I'm Games Planning Turia. In the game of Turia, you are deciding what actions you're going to do based on the sides of the castles that are facing towards you, which means there are only four actions available to you on each turn. One, two, three, four. When you choose one of those actions, so for example, if I choose this one, you will immediately turn the castle 90 degrees in an anti-clockwise direction. You'll then do the action. There is one group of warriors that will move around the board. So everyone is moving around the board at the same rate. You will judge what you're going to do from where the warriors are. You have three movements of the warrior group for free. You can choose to pay to move them further. So if this group of warriors wish to move over to that one, it would go one, two. It's absolutely fine. That's within the three free movements. We could go a third free movement down to there. If I wish to move any further, it would then cost me. It would cost me one money per movement. So if I'm trying to get over to here, I would then have to pay one, two money to get there. And so those two money would come out of my supply and back to the bank. Now, if I've gone to here, what I've done is I've passed two points where there are gems. So I would ch take the gems. If there is a black gem as well as a colored gem, I would take both of them. If there are two colored gems, I take one of them. So I might choose to take that one if I happen to go via the spot at the top, which I haven't. What do those gems do? Well, the colored gems will enable you to purchase stuff up here, and I'll get into what each of the things does in a second. The black gems are curses, or they're poisonous gems, or they stop you from being able to enter the castle and get married. Huh, why would I want to get married? That's the point of the game. Once you have seven money, seven hearts and no black gems, you can, on your next turn, go to the chapel, put your little mark there, and then you'll choose one of the doors. The doors are around the chapel. I haven't put them in yet because I wish to show them to you. There's the pile of doors. That's the door you're looking for. The king's son and daughter because you wish to marry them. That is the point of the game. The person who marries one of these guys is the winner. If you open any of the other doors, what you're going to get is a negative. So if you open this, you need to have one of the elements from that space sitting in your supply so you can get rid of it. If you open that, you need to have an extra sword. If you open that, you need to have one of these guys. I'll talk about them in a second. If you open that, you need an extra coin sitting in your supply. Or if you open any of these four, you need the gem of the color sitting in your supply, waiting for you to get rid of them. If you don't have them, it has cost you to have a look behind a door. That door stays turned face up, so making it easier for everyone else who comes to the castle after you. If you look behind the door and you have the item that is on the door, you can give that up to have a look behind another door. And you can continue doing this until you find that couple. So it's actually worthwhile having a spare of every item so that you can find those guys when you get their first go. If, however, you flip over one of those doors and show an item that you do not have, then you will need to wait until you have seven money and seven hearts and no black gems again and go back and have another go at it at a later stage in the game. So what do the various spots do? Let's have a look at it. We'll start down here. If you stop the group at the sword master, you will get two extra swords. If you give that up, that will enable you to follow the action of another group. So if the other player has put them there, getting two swords, you could give that up, which means giving that to the other player, and then you get to do take the two swords. So taking two swords looks like that. If you obviously don't have an elixir, you are not able to follow anyone's actions. When you go to the forest fairy, you get to take one of the two magical items that are available. So this one or this one. 
It is marked on the back of these cards what each of the actions do or each of the Forest Fairy's magic items will do. There are 16 of those cards, 16 different icons. It's worthwhile having a look at them as they come up so you know what you're going after. This is the Fountain Fairy. You will be able to get rid of one of these black gems that you've picked up in previous turns and that gets thrown out of the game. Uh, let's come across now to the Thief, which is the green one. The Thief allows you to draw three gems out of the bag and in secret, you'll have a look at them and decide one to keep. If all three are black, you just will then keep drawing until you collect one of them. So that one will then go behind your screen. If you head up to the dragon's castle or the dragon's lair or where the dragon is, you get to roll this die. If that die shows one of the gems that you have, then you're able to give that one up. Uh, notice there is a black side on the die as well. If you're able to give that up, you'll get a heart for your bravery. If however, you're not able to give that up, you can give up a sword to repeat the die action. Notice that the side up that you've rolled last is the side that will go back over this side to the goldsmith. What does the goldsmith do? When you go to the goldsmith, you have three choices. You can exchange a gem for a gold, exchange two gems of the same color for a heart, or exchange three gems of the same color for two hearts. If you give up three gems of the same color and that color is the color shown by the die, then that will actually give you an extra heart as well on top of the two that you've taken. The blacksmith is not willing to take black gems, however. So if it's the blue side up, then fine. If it's the black side up, then we're in trouble. You can't get away with that. If we now head up to the trader, what you're able to do is trade in gems for money. So that's shown on the three symbols above it or the three tokens above it. So you'll put the gems that are indicated on that tile into the supply bag and then take the amount of money that's shown on the on the tile. For example, if you were to throw in a yellow, blue and red gem back into the bag, you get six money for that. Once one of these tiles has been used, that then goes to the bottom and we turn over the next one so that it's a different combination of gems available for the next player. And then finally is the wizard's observatory. When you go here, you have a couple of options. You can Pay the wizard to move you to any location. So the wizard could move you straight there. You pay the wizard one money or the wizard can conjure you into this magic realm that you have to go through the wizard to get to. At the magic realm, you're going to trade one sword for either one heart or three money. I believe that is all of the spots that are available to us. And that is how to play the game of Turia. The only other thing that I haven't really touched on is the purple gems. The purple gems allow you to do whatever action that you're doing. So this will sit behind your screen until you choose to use it. When you use it, you will double the actions. So if, for example, you went there and gave up a purple gem, you would take four swords instead of just the two. So you do the action twice. There is an alternate ending to the game. So rather than going through all the doors to find the right one, you could just say, if not, if people at the table don't like that, you could just say the first person to get to the chapel with their uh, seven money and seven hearts and no black gems, they will win the game. That's entirely up to you and the rest of the players to choose what you're going to do on that. I think that I will leave it there. If you have any comments or suggestions, please write them below. If you have any games that you wish to be games playing, please shoot me an email at thegamesplainer at gmail.com. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at thegamesplainer to keep up to date with the games that I'm playing. Subscribe to my videos to keep up to date with the games that I'm games planning. And until next time, enjoy gaming.